Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, it's back into the very best one, in my opinion, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our Let's Play by email with the devilish Mr. Ludrick. And he was devilish indeed last turn, as we had the disaster of Suva, as it's been called in the history books. Uh, we were trying to get the 134th Regiment uh, hailing from the great state of Minnesota up to Suva. Uh, we thought we could sneak in there. I thought his carriers had cleared. Uh, we'll talk about it more when we get down there. It was a mistake, certainly. Uh, the, the results were terrible. Uh, you know, we'll talk again why I thought it was okay to do and why that was wrong. Uh, but we'll look at a lot of stuff this time. We'll go around the map. It is now January 8th. 19th 1942 so we had just looked at the combat results from the 16th and 17th including that disaster it is now our setup phase for the 18th and so Lodrick is set up and he sent us the file and here we are we're centered over Pearl Harbor as you always will be as the allied player and I just wanted to talk about Pearl Harbor for a moment. It's probably something we haven't touched on as much in this game. I did a lot in the uh, game I was playing against the AI. Uh, that game still exists. So, you know, Stanley, if you're watching this, don't worry. We'll get back to it at some point. I know that uh, Greg and Stanley and some other people say, hey, get back to that one. We will get back to it eventually. It's just, this is more fun, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's just more fun to play a human. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think we can learn as much with this, but uh, we'll get back to an AI game. Anyway, let's let's look at Pearl Harbor really quickly. Now, what do I have going on in and around and over uh, Pearl Harbor? Well, out here, we've got um, ASW happening. That's the PC Taney, so patrol craft. Uh, we have a big tanker task force coming in here and as you can see it's got the usual amount of escorts now destroyer mine layer but it has asw on it uh destroyer mine sweeper also has a two asw rating and then we have another so i don't even have a regular destroyer in here we've got two uh, mine layers and a mine sweeper uh, but they all have asw capability this is kind of a hodgepodge it all got thrown together now these are two big tankers you know you can see they're full of 14,000 tons each of oil uh, I'm sorry fuel fuel I always want to say oil because I think of tankers carrying oil uh, but this is already refined into fuel and then we've actually got three cargo ships here now they're all the same speed so it worked out uh, fine to send them all together so that's coming into Pearl and we pretty much have one tanker group coming in at all times one loading up back on the west coast uh, la and san francisco at all times and then we have a big cargo force that's you know either coming out and going back and we have one loading up usually maybe two um you know out here moving back and forth with one always loading you've got enough cargo you've got enough tanker ships to do that that you could always have one at san francisco or la which is where i always do it anyway uh you could do it in san diego or Seattle they have enough fuel and cargo or uh, supply to do it as well but I just keep it simple and do LA and San Francisco and that way you never have too many of them out here you just don't need it you can keep Pearl Harbor in good shape with one big massive cargo uh, task force like this moving out here to unload at all times uh, and so that's what we've got going on now this only has one dms in it i need to fix that because he's obviously got a lot of subs out here we don't know exactly where they are uh, but there's a lot of them and here's the uh, second huge tanker force so we've got one coming in we've got one going out uh, you can see this is a big one 47,000 total tons we've got the usual lineup of three asw ships along with it and we have not i don't i think maybe we lost one little cargo ship that was escorted since we've gone to full escort so that's been uh, working out quite well um so that's kind of what's going on around here you can see here we have the pc tiger we have the pc reliance we have the PC Charleston. So it's all PCs that I'm running ASW sweeps in and around close to the island. Okay. Um, now then, I've 
at Pearl Harbor itself, you've got all of these aircraft, all in Hawaiian USAAF. I would say early on, especially, really, you know, keep them here just in case the Japanese player turns around, decides he wants to make a move for Pearl Harbor. Uh, you've got enough air cover, even if your pilots aren't very good at the start, you've got enough air cover to fight that off uh, when they're all up in. And you can see, I don't have them all up in cap. I've got this group up in the cap. Um, then we've got bombers training. I have some of the fighters that are training, like these Mohawks. There's 25 Mohawks here that I have in training. We could also put them them up uh, this Pacific Fleet group here they you know well you can move the Hawaiian USAAF off of Hawaii you don't have to buy it out uh, I usually leave them here and use them as trainers that's just me you don't have to do that you could move these all out to island somewhere if you want um, these era cobras though there are only eight of them I'm gonna move those uh, either up to Johnston Island or over to Midway so their Pacific Fleet, it's just eight Aracobras. I find Aracobras to be the least effective for the most part of your fighters. They're not nearly as effective as Warhawks uh, early on. And so I will move those out to Johnston or Midway. The Warhawks, now not these, I'm going to keep these at Pearl Harbor, but the ones that are back on the West Coast, will slide those around to New Zealand, Australia, and our line of islands that we want to hold. Uh, and so you can see uh, the Hawaiian USAAF out here. The Navy has their USN Forward Air Central Pacific stationed here in Hawaii, and we've got a lot of uh, Catalina. So you're talking recon aircraft. Now some of these can move out, whether it be Midway or Johnston or down to Christmas or Palmyra. Take These Catalinas are your very best recon planes. I put them on Naval Search. I don't put them on recon uh, just in case they want to take a shot at something. But um, these have a massive range, 20. Uh, extended radius is 20 so they can get out a long ways and if we go get on one of these they're always these PAs usually you can see how big their range is now I've got all four of these I've got one going this way one going this way one this way we talked a little bit about that last time uh, but you know early on you probably just want to make sure nothing's in and around Pearl Harbor but later on then you can move them to Johnston and Midway and then start island hopping with them and they give you a really good uh, view of what the Japanese are up to especially I mean you look over here I mean we're we're not that far away from the Japanese uh, bases uh, Marshall Islands right here um, as far as ships go uh, we can go look at the ships here We've got a big bunch of destroyers, and these destroyers, I'm actually going to have a couple of them go catch up with this, not that one, this one, since it's only, not that one, where is the one that I saw that only had one DM in it? Well, whichever one that is, uh, we're going to go slide into it with uh, some destroyers. Uh, we've got the AM Penguin here. You'll always have mine sweepers uh, kind of going around this, you know, the Pearl Harbor area or the Hawaiian Island area. You also have mine layers. I would get them out to Johnston, down to Hilo, up to Midway, over to Lahue. You know, just put down a bunch of mines. You've got almost a limitless number of them as the allies. You may as well pop them down. Okay, so we have a tanker group. We So we've actually got three tanker groups that are in and around Pearl Harbor here. I think it's in a couple of turns that I, I crank that down to where I just have one coming or going at all times. Uh, but we've got one unloading here. It was a huge group. Um, total load uh, was 42,000 when we had it all loaded up, but it's unloading out here. You see unloading. Uh, we've also got the one carrier out here, the Enterprise, because as we talked about, we've got our three other carriers actually back at Los Angeles. So, you know, I surround them, of course, with anything that's got anti-air on it, and all of these do. Now, the Honolulu, that's a 286. I'm, I'm looking right up here at anti-aircraft. Only an 89. Some of these early American cruisers or light cruisers are essentially worthless. I mean, you just don't put them out anywhere because they're worth 28 points. Uh, his anti-aircraft number is only 89, and he's only got six-inch guns. That's just not going to do it uh, against any kind of decent craft. And so these you just hide at Pearl Harbor for the rest of the game.
I, I never move him out. I mean, you maybe put him out on some kind of secondary mission, potentially, uh, to bombard some small island if you don't think you're going to run into the Japanese. But those 89 anti-aircraft light cruisers, just bury them at Pearl Harbor. You get a lot better light cruisers later on. Um, and then the heavy cruisers, or the regular cruisers, I guess, uh, 286 isn't very good either. And so that's why these have been left back here. Uh, the Louisville has a 286. This is what, the Northampton class? Yeah, 286. It does have eight, a couple of 8-inch, well, I say a couple, it's got six and three more 8-inch guns, but they're just not they're not good enough, really, to match up with the Japanese, especially early. If we go back and look at our other carriers and what's with them, and there they sit, uh, you can see here we've got uh, the St. Louis, this light cruiser. On its own, it's got a 512 uh, on anti-aircraft. Now, that's worthwhile having along with you with a carrier. That's going to shoot some zeros out of the air. Uh, the 89 is not really going to do it. And then you see the heavy cruisers here. We've got 530. Uh, whoops. You know the Yorktown's got a lot. Uh, Salt Lake City, 508. So anything, once you get it, it's kind of on a 1 to 1,000 scale. And I know somebody yelled at me when I did the tutorial and said, well, I've seen ships with more than 1,000. Well, I have two. Uh, but it's if you just think of it as zero to 1,000, there are a few ships that go above that. I don't know if it's can think of it as a bonus or something, but really it's zero to 1,000, uh, just like the anti sub is zero to 10, you know, and so it's just on a, on a scale of a thousand. So, anyway, back to Pearl Harbor before we go down too many rabbit holes, but we've got another group of destroyers here as well. I'm going to send all of these destroyers out here. I know that he's got submarine. We detected the submarines when our carriers went through the first time. When they uh, come back eventually, maybe we'll be able to spot even more. But until then, I'm going to send destroyers out here and really try to wreck his sub fleet if we can as much as possible. Now, let's go look at the ships in repair, because I do think this is, and you can see all of the ships I have here. We've got the ACMs taking care of the mines, of course. Then we just have an absolute boatload, pun intended, of uh, tenders. We've got you. We've got AOs, we've got AGs, you know, these are... Um, ammunition tenders or they can be miscellaneous i guess they are miscellaneous ags sometimes they're listed as ammunition i thought well it doesn't matter you can use them as ammunition tenders but the basic idea is they're general tenders um the humor chant an ak uh, so we only have really one cargo here we do have the light cruiser phoenix that's an okay one 286 uh, it's in the brooklyn class that just came out of repair so we'll have to put it with something and we also got the bin amount of rep repair this time which is what i really wanted to go look at so a few buttons here when you pull this up out of port uh, you can change the headquarters for the ships on the list Okay, might be something you want to do, uh, depending how, you know, what's going on. Uh, allow upgrades. We can talk more about upgrades and reinforcements some other episode. Uh, load tenders. Now, this one's very important. Click on this. I, I always say at the big ports, I click on this every turn. Uh, left click. Five ships on this list are loaded up as tenders. I like to have all my tenders loaded if I could. And also at a place like Pearl Harbor, it's not like you're really drawing that much off the supply. You know, it's got 200,000 tons here. It's not a big deal. I, di I didn't look at what it was before, but it probably took like 5,000 tons off of the supply, you know, total supply here. That's how tenders get filled up, unless they're like AOs or something. And then if, you know, comes from the fuel, obviously you see an AO got fueled up there so that could draw quite a bit but at pearl harbor you have 748,000. well we've got no fuel problems so you know i pretty much at the major ports at the major ports uh do load tenders every time just in case something new has come in and it doesn't have something on it i just always load up the tenders then you have refuel and arm ships on the list so lefty uh, there were two ships that needed refuel, and it'll take it right out of there, and it will up. You'll see their endurance go to green to the extent they were red. I didn't see what was red on here. Um, rearm. So if you have, you know, battleships in here, cruisers, light cruisers that are at anchor, you can right-click on this. So 
left click is refuel right click is rearm and you can rearm those ships to the extent that they've uh, discharged their ordnance um the other really, well, one useful one here is so show ships do an upgrade. Well, as you can see, we've, <laughs> we've got a lot of ships that are doing upgrade. Now, a lot of these tenders, uh, I mean, you can upgrade them, I guess, but uh, I guess it depends on how free and loose you want to be with the, you know, your materials, I guess. You know, I mean, they ultimately it costs to uh to upgrade them they're also out of commission you have to put them uh you know uh, off offline status so you know i mean if you want to upgrade them that's fine i usually focus of course more on the big battleships the carriers things like that uh for for my upgrades um uh, for some of these things like the ags the aos it, you know, it doesn't always make sense, uh, but you can do it if you want. Um, show ships under repair. Obviously, it's a huge deal at Pearl Harbor. We have got right now 74,000 tons in the repair yard or the shipyard. It has a capacity of 100,000. Now, how would we have known that without looking at that? Well, if we pull up Pearl Harbor, it says shipyard 100. Now, you can't see that other zero or you barely can underneath there, but 100 equate, it's in thousands right so it's 100,000 tons and each uh, ship in the game has a certain number of tons and so let's go back here what do we have in here now well I've got all of the smaller ships that need repaired um, in the shipyard for the most part I mean uh, you know sometimes with the tenders they're certainly not as pressing because you just don't need tenders for a while um, and so the AE here you know I've got that pier side I've got uh, then we get up into the battleships right and the battleships weigh the most so if we look at the Arizona 31,000 tons well we've got a hundred thousand in capacity 74,000 tons of that is being used. Now, when you get up to capacity, for every ton that you put in here, it slows down all of the ships. And then you really start to pay a penalty if you go over 100,000. So it's not like it won't allow you to put it in. Uh, there may be a hard cap at some point, but you can put, I, I could put the Arizona in here right now. You know, we could click on the Arizona uh, we it's already stood down we could put it in the shipyard it tells us 238 days if we go back you see used 105,970 so you can go over the capacity it just slows everything way down um, and so you may not want to do that now in this case we've got we've repaired enough ships we've had light cruisers and cruisers come out uh, that you know really we're kind of down to the battleships we've got a few things that you know three days five days seven days uh, but it's time to start putting some of the battleships in and the way i usually do it are, are the ones that don't need that much repair like the west virginia i say not that much i mean it's obviously still pretty extensive but the west virginia and the arizona i'll probably put those in first and then i have the ones that are more heavily damaged at pier side once their float gets down to about 30 or below, um, you know, so let's just say the Pennsylvania here. Once these come down a little bit, we'll look at the Pennsylvania, how much of this is major. System damage, none of that is major, so that can get fixed up at the pier side. Flood damage, almost all of this is major, but that's okay. 32 is not fatal. Engine damage, 47, 27 major. Once that starts to patch up a little bit, I'll, put the, I'll batch that together with some destroyers, and I'll send it back to San Francisco and just get it out, you know, to some place that has a lot of capacity uh, when it comes to troops uh, here you know move out all the ones you don't have to buy out first so we have two base forces here we'll put those on strap move uh, because they're both Pacific Fleet now you see here at Hawaii the Hawaiian Department is restricted uh, some of these you can buy out some you can't some of them you don't want to you know we want to keep some infantry regiments in or at Pearl Harbor, of course. I mean, that just makes sense, right? Uh, you're going to have to defend it with some stuff. But, you know, you've got enough things that are Pacific Fleet here that can move out. And I would turn all of those to Strat so they're ready to go when you have a transport. And then think about where you want to send each one. And that brings me to kind of my next point for 
I wanted to talk about today is what do you put on these islands? And I get that question a lot. Uh, it's probably not something I've focused on a lot here, but that will take us down to Suva. Oh, and I did want to say we are going to get to the recap of the last turn. So, you know, if you like, if you're used to that up front, uh, understood. I was just over Pearl Harbor and I decided, ah, oh, let's just uh, let me ramble on for a bit. Then we'll go look at the uh, stats uh, on January 18th uh, here at the end of the episode. But let's go to, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll start in Palmyra, which is kind of your first place south. And what do I have here? Well, I don't have a base force here, and I would like to. So on each one of these islands, my usual setup, or what I would like to see, and if you watch my War in the East, you know, game, um, it's kind of goes kind of like support units. You know, there's a certain setup I like to have at my cores for my support units. It's the same thing with these islands out here. Now, some islands are more important than others, right? I, you know, I don't think I need to tell you that. Uh, but as a base case for each of the islands you actually give a damn about out here, I like to have a base force. I like to have some engineers, and we have those just naturally here at Palmyra. You see Palmyra U, uh, U.S. Navy engineers here. There are 39 engineers in this group, so that's awesome. Uh, they should be able to build stuff really quickly. I mean, a lot of these units have six or eight engineers. Here we've got 39, and that build, you know, speeds up fortification build, airfield build, port build, anything that has to be built in this game. The more engineers, the better. They also, this also has a lot of natural aviation support. You see there, 25, which is great. I mean, you really, there's no reason to put more than 25 planes. I would think on a place like Palmyra. Um, but we'll get to the plane loadout that I would like to see on a place like Nomaya. Or uh, did I say Nomaya? Palmyra, Palmyra. Uh, it also has 12 support, and support becomes important when you have ground troops here. So, But when you get the base force <clears throat> out here, and I will, uh, I, I should have already done it, but as a matter of fact, if we go back to Pearl Harbor and we look what's back at Pearl for a second, uh, you may have noticed we have the hunt. Why is that? Come on, click. There we go. Couldn't get off that for a second. Um, oh, you know why? Because that's not Pearl Harbor. My goodness, I'm losing my mind. Uh, Pearl Harbor here, you can see we've got a number of base forces. But you probably noticed when we looked at the units, the 118th and the 119th are Pacific Fleet. I say we send these to Palmyra, and then we'll look at Christmas. I just can't remember if I have a base force down here. I do. Okay, and I actually have two groups of engineers here. Uh, but we need to get a base force to Palmyra, so one of those I'll bring down to Palmyra. Okay, so I like to have a base force that will also give it support, quote unquote support. And that's what you need for infantry uh, or, you know, there's motorized support as well that you, you need for more motorized units. But for the typical grunts out here, you need support. You know, it, it's just the logistical support. How do they get fed? How do they get new boots? That kind of stuff. Uh, that's what support is. Uh, and if you don't have enough of it, your units will start to degrade. OK, uh, it's just like if you don't have enough aviation support for the planes that you have here, uh, your planes will start to get damaged or as they get damaged, they don't get repaired as fast. So uh, that's how support works in this game. You need to always make sure. And a lot of the, a lot of these things have natural support, you know, like the engineers, they just naturally have 12 in support. Uh, the base force at Christmas since I know we've got one here, how much support? It's got 50 support, right? If we go to the base force up here, uh, which one? 118th, I think, was the one I was looking at. You've got the, the Pearl Harbor one. We're obviously not going to move that. But look at that, 149 support. And then you have aviation support and naval support. It's same idea, whether it be naval, aviation, or it, they just call it support, but it really could be called infantry support. Uh, you've got to have enough you know, support points for what you've got there. But anyway, let's look at 118th. 
it's got 50 support. So that seems to be kind of the general number that a U.S. base force has is 50 support. Uh, this has 30 aviation. This has 30 aviation. It's got eight engineers. This one has eight engineers. I'm just kind of flipping back between 118th and 119th to compare them. Uh, 119th has, has 11 flak, so it has some natural anti-aircraft. Uh, and the 118th has 12. Okay, perfect. So anyway, back to my, uh, you know, kind of bigger point. What do you like to have on these bases, on these islands as we come out here? A base force, engineers, and then you have these things called marine defense battalions. I like to, you know, you've got several of them. You've got the 6th, the 7th, the 5th the fourth. Uh, I like to have them on all these islands out here by Pearl Harbor. So I think we've got one already naturally up at Midway. Uh, let's see. We do. All right. That's the sixth. All right. So we've got a base force here. We don't have any engineers here yet because it sometimes can be dangerous going up to Midway. We've already had a cargo ship that was blown out of the water here. But as you can see, I've got two squadrons of submarines sitting off Midway now, just in case he wants to come here. Maybe we'll give him a nice little uh, birthday surprise. Um Okay, and you can see I've got submarine squadrons in defensive positions all up and down this line. So these are the main, up and around Pearl Harbor, these are the main, what is it, four islands I care about. Christmas Island, Palmyra, Johnston, and Midway. They all kind of run in a line here. They're your first line of defense before Pearl Harbor or before the Japanese would come this way. Uh, and I try to really beef them up uh, you don't if the Japanese get in at Midway or Johnston or Palmyra it can just cause you so many problems because they have a launching base then to go out and mess with all of your shipping so really try to build those up um so anyway, uh, base force will get down here. Engineers, these marine defense battalions. I think we have one at, nope, we didn't have one at Christmas. Uh, actually, I just looked at that. Uh, but we do have one out at Johnston. Here you can see it's the Johnston defense battalion. It's the same idea. It's artillery. So if he tries to come and load, you know, uh, unload here, we got guns shooting back the other direction. Again, we need a base force at Johnston. That's where we'll take the 119th or the 118th, and the other one will go to Palmyra. We'll get those base forces out here. I think we've already got one at Midway. We do. It's got 12 flak, 14 engineers, 24 aviation support, and 50 support. Awesome. Okay, so we've got that in a Marine Battalion. I don't know if we'll bring engineers out here. Uh, Midway at the moment, I've just got building fortifications. Your airfield is already three over. You can expand it even if you want to. And I don't think we really need to expand the port. It's it's not a place that ships are moving through that would want to drop off or pick up uh, freight. So there's really no reason to expand the port, at least not early on. I mean, maybe later on if you're using it as some kind of uh, go through as, towards the Japanese home islands, but I, I really don't think that there's a reason to do it early on. So really no need for engineers up there. What else would I like to have up here? Well, I'd love to have an infantry regiment on each of these islands. Now, sometimes with the smaller ones like Christmas or Palmyra, mm, you know, yeah, you'd like to have one. It's not mission critical. Uh, unless the Japanese, you really think they're going to come and attack Palmyra. If you, if you really think he's going to come try to get it, get an infantry regiment down there as fast as you can. And if we go and look at Pearl very quickly uh, here, do we have any that are unrestricted? Uh, we have engineers. Okay, so we do have an engineer group if we wanted to send a midway. That's But this is Southwest Pacific. We'll probably send that on a, around the bend. Um, we have an AA regiment. That is something else that I like to have on every island, but they're in very short supply early in the game. You get a lot of them, I think, in like 1943 as the Allies, but early on in the game, you don't have quite the number of AA units that you would like. Um, as you can see, though, we do have the 64th Coastal, okay? Uh, and then we have two more here. So we have the 64th, the 97th, and the 98th that we could all take off of Pearl Harbor without buying them out. So that just kind of adds to, you know, what else would you like to have here? 
Space Force, engineers, uh, Marine Artillery, AA, all right? AA and Infantry Regiment. Now, I'm not seeing any Infantry Regiments he here that I could buy out. Or, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that I don't have to buy out. Am I wrong about that? Let's uh, do by type. Um, no, we've got a lot of engineers here. Here's our infantry. They're all Hawaiian department. We've got the 19th, the 21st, the 27th, and 35th. So any infantry regiment that comes out here is probably going to have to come from the West Coast. And if we go back to Los Angeles then, uh, which is where I bring all of my units that can ship out to the extent I can, I bring them all to Los Angeles so I don't lose track of them. If we look here, uh, we've got some inter interesting things here. We've got a full infantry division but it's restricted. That would be expensive as heck. We've got the 138th, okay, uh, that's uh, landlocked here. We've got something called the 1st Marine Raider Battalion. Okay, it's got a 40 assault value. That's awesome. I mean, that's going to be an offensive force probably eventually. As you can see, I've got it on strategic move. We're going to move it out uh, and put it out here at one of those forward bases uh, for now for now but then eventually it's a raider battalion for goodness sakes we got to get it on the offense but uh, if you look here 125th 164th 160 108th all of these we would have to buy out and we probably will as you see though it costs 714 points uh so you can tell losing the 134th infantry regiment like we did that hurts. That hurts. That's uh, that's like, you know, the equivalent of 714 political points uh, losing that whole regiment. All right. Sticking at Palmyra, then uh, let's just talk very quickly. What kind of planes? Well, the Catalinas are great. They've got the big, big uh, range out here. Now, we've only got two down here right at the start at Palmyra. I've got them flying out west here. Uh, as far as we can go, uh, where I think the Japanese might be most likely to come this way, of course we'd like to have more. Uh, we do have more at Christmas Island. We've got eight of them here. Um, and I've got those flying up over Palmyra as well. Uh, you know, I don't know. Could the Japanese sneak around this way? I guess it's possible. We could just put this on a general arc. We take that off and now it's, you know, flying this big general arc all the way out here but keep in mind when it's not as focused it's going to miss things right i mean it, you know when you have eight planes all doing this range right here they're probably more likely to see something than if you have eight planes doing all of this so you know that's kind of yin and yang whichever whichever you're really trying to do probably early in the game a more general search makes sense uh until we get a read on maybe where you know, Lodric wants to move through. Uh, if he if he even dares bring the Japanese uh, this way towards, you know, the the Hawaiian Islands, or if he's even going to make a play for the West Coast or something. For now, probably doing a big general search makes more sense. Um, so I like to have, you know, now remember we've got how much aviation support here? There's 25. There's 16. So that's 41. And this makes it 51, but the airfield's not very big. We got to be building that airfield. And you can see I'm expanding it. Uh, we're also expanding the fortifications. Christmas is a place you may think about expanding the port. I'm not doing it now because I'm having a hard time getting supply down here. Now, you wouldn't tell that uh, seeing 17,000, but we just got some in here. Uh, and that should last a good long while. I don't think there's a huge reason to... Uh, expand the port at Christmas. We're not going to be, you know, way up here early in the game. Now, once we get into 43, we may do it as we have things moving out this way and we may want to stop over in Christmas Island from the West Coast. Uh, but for now, anyway, it's, it's a very defensive place. So I don't think expanding the port uh, necessarily has to happen early in 42 anyway. Uh, again, once you're starting to get offensive, it may be a place where you want to expand the port, but not for now. Um, so, you know, we've got, if we look over here, aviation sport 51. We've only got eight planes here. What does that mean? Well, I like to have one group of Catalinas, if you can find them. If not, it's float planes, right? Doing recon. Then I like to have at least one group of fighters. Uh, I like those smaller groups of Aerocobras, like the eight, uh, maybe 12. At an island like this, it's just, you know, that's 
kind of the number of fighters you need. You don't need 25 fighters. Now, you can put them down here uh, if things start to heat up down by Christmas Island. Um, but just generally speaking, kind of, you know, those groups of eight or 12 planes, those squadrons, uh, I like to have those at a place like Christmas. So we'll take those Era Cobras and maybe put them on. What do I have on Johnston right now? Yep, uh, this will this will show the point. And as you can see, eight Era Cobras. What are they doing? 50 cap. Uh, I had them on sweep because we thought we saw some uh, Japanese planes out, or uh, I'm sorry, ships out here. Uh, let's put them on just general escort. I don't think we want the Air Cobras out sweeping quite yet. Our pilots aren't good enough, although these guys aren't bad. 55 experience, uh, but we put them on a 50 cap. Uh, I always fly Air Cobras at 10,000 feet. Uh, that's kind of where they're best. If we look at the Air craft data you could go to 15,000 but out here at a place like Palmyra I'm, I'm almost using them as recon a little bit um, now they will uh, defend if he's got carriers coming in and then we may want to bump them to 15,000 feet but I keep them at 10 and I always put them out to the extended radius because again they're kind of running a recon mission a little bit so this is a good example um, you know if, if I add a base force an AA an infantry regiment uh, here. You could also add art, uh, more artillery if you want. Um, that could be something else that goes with your kind of basic setup on an island. Uh, that could be helpful. Uh, so fighters, one group of eight Era Cobras here. You can see I split them. Where did I put the others? They have it midway? No. They Oh, they're back at Pearl. Uh, we saw them, that group of eight. So we'll get those going to Christmas or Palmyra, I think. We could also put them up at Midway, potentially. Um, and then I like, once you get them, dive bombers. We just don't have hardly any at this point. And the ones we have are all the way over in Australia. Now, I'm not talking about the carriers. The carriers have dive bombers, but just freestanding dive bomber units, you just don't have many of them. I've got all of my American ones training in Adelaide. For whatever reason, they come into Australia. That's where you receive them. I put them over here where they're safe, or they should be safe anyway, at a place like Adelaide or Port Augusta. This is where I train a lot of aircraft uh, in Australia because it's around the bend. It's hard for the uh, Japanese to get over here and even if they do you're probably going to know about it uh you should anyway if you've got your recon you know operating correctly so anyway um i've got these training over here but as you can see their experience 35 33 i mean these pilots are not good not good i mean their naval bombing skill is terrible as well 52s 51s you want to see 70s right at 60, they're a, a decent pilot. At 70, they're actually a good pilot. Here we are in the you know, 33 and 23. Uh, so we're training these four groups of dive bombers up. We just don't have many of them. And these need to be used at Sydney and Brisbane and whatnot. You're not going to be using them at Christmas Island. Uh, not at this point in the game. Uh, but once, you know, the U.S. production kicks into a whole nother gear and you've just got dive bombers all over the map, uh, you know, that would be the other part of this suite of planes that I like to have, you know, recon four or eight, ideally four, six or eight of the Catalinas, uh, eight to 12 fighters on a smaller island at a place like Suva, probably 25 on a squadron, and then a group of dive bombers. And that should have you in fairly good stead on most of these islands. Okay, uh, that was fun. Um, damn, that reminded me of the old tutorials. That got me excited. Okay, what do we have going on down here? We were talking about general strategy last time. Now that I just did that whole spiel, I'm not sure if we're going to have enough time to go, you know, fully into strategy this time. Uh, but I did want to talk about what's going on down here because we, I had mentioned Haiva Oa, all right? And so I've got a ship coming into Haiva Oa uh, to start to fuel that. I've got, uh, this is supply that will be coming into Haiva Oa. As you can see, I've got transport ships that are coming out and around Haiva Oa. Once I've got Haiva Oa built up, you'll wanna get a base force and engineers here. Once I have that started to be built up, I'll have things just stop over here, do a tactical refuel if they need it. Uh, we'll also put return by the same route, yes, because usually when they come back through, 
they would need a tactical refuel here at Haiva Oa to make it back to Los Angeles. But I build up Haiva Oa and Tahiti, and that is now ongoing. Uh, you can see I've got a tanker group here that's uh, fully loaded. I've got it on do not unload now, but we're going to unload the cargo here and also auto disband initially. So we put a lot of these support vessels in at Tahiti. I'll also put a whole nother group of them at Haiva Oa just in case we need them out here for something. Well, uh, we got smoked last time. Um, oh, by the way, this transport has part of 161st Infantry on it. It did get nicked by a sub. I say nicked, it got 63 on the float damage from a submarine. I'm actually going to turn that around, and that's why I have all of this stuff coming to, you know, to Tahiti. Uh, I'm going to turn this around and drop off what's left of the 161st here one regiment now we didn't lose the whole regiment the bigger part of it is headed towards new zealand and it's fine uh, as a matter of fact we didn't lose any men but but the transport is damaged so we're going to go drop off this 35 of motorized support at tahiti and we'll have a transport come through and pick that up and then they'll go catch up with their buddies uh, in the 161st regiment so let's get that turned around go to tahiti but that's why i have a repair ship here uh, and I've got other tenders for situations like this. It'll come in here. It's not going to make it all the way back to Los Angeles. So I have to get the repair ship going on it there. Okay, uh, this is where the ball game happened last time. And we've got a huge problem. Now, subs, I'm going to have the subs immediately come over here and try to interfere with his, you know, who knows, you may get a lucky shot off on a carrier escort or something and blow one of those out. And how would I go about doing this? Well, I do it by patrol zone. So let's just set a boundary one patrol zone right on top of it and hope that it's so busy firing on what we have out here that he can come over here his patrol zone is one his max react is one when he gets here he'll be like oh ships nice that's in my patrol zone and hopefully we'll get some torps off on it uh also we're gonna have to get whatever's unloading here and it's eighth marine who thank goodness Hey, this is a good example of how I like to have these islands out here. Pago Pago. I've actually got two base forces here, 104th U.S. Navy and 101st U.S. Uh, base force. So two base forces here. Okay. They've got a, quite a bit of aviation support. That puts us up at like 57. Then we've got one of those. This is 7th Marine Defense Battalion. We've got uh, the Samoan R Marine Battalion. And now we've got the 8th Marine Regiment, or at least most of it. I don't know what's still on here. Eh, not a whole lot. Motorized support and two 90 millimeter M1A1s. Uh, those are AA guns. Uh, tell you what, we're just going to get this out of here. Let's uh, cancel the unload. All right. And unloading stopped. We weren't docked anyway, just to make sure it starts moving. I just don't want it blown up. You know, why give up transports if we don't have to? We have almost all of the 8th Marine off of there. Let's just get it out of here as fast as we can. Uh, does it make a difference if we put it on full speed at all? Uh, 16 would be how fast we would move at full speed. Mission speed is 16. And you'll see that a lot with the transports and the cargo. It doesn't make any difference if you put them on full speed. Uh, the mission speed is their full speed. We've got no ships in port here. We have 12 Catalinas that are up and flying. This is what pisses me off about this. Now, I don't know if he just got completely lucky and happened to be sailing down here right as this got here, or if he was sitting up here. If he was sitting up here, this pisses me off because we had Catalinas flying over the top of him. My, I, I would like to think that he just got a little lucky that this all happened at the same time. We started to come north. He was coming south and said, Oh, hey, what's going on? All right. As you can see, we've got damaged ships here. When ships get damaged, you see that E on them because they're getting escorted. That is just a uh, mechanic of the game. It's not like it's not like you set this up as an escort task force. What this is telling you is escort ships have come in to try to ferry this back somewhere. Look, I mean, we could try to run to New Zealand. 
but it, first of all, it's not going to work. We're only moving at one hex at a time. If we look at the speeds, and one thing I love about this game is the speeds update dynamically. So when it takes damage, it actually shows you the new speed it can move at. And we've taken enough engine, well, we didn't take too much engine damage, but still, 7, 10, 5. So this group's only going to move at a 5. It always moves at the slowest. Um, you know, it's never going to make it to New Zealand. I also don't want to draw his carriers down here because we have all kinds of stuff coming in and out of New Zealand at this point. So I'm just going to try to get up to Suva. Maybe we get lucky. Here's one pulse, two pulses, three pulses, four pulses. It'll be here after next turn. It would take two full turns to get here it's going to get destroyed. It just is. And at this point, I'm kind of thinking of it like, uh, did I say the 134th? I meant the 34th. That was 34th infantry. If anybody in um, Minnesota was scared, I, I wrote letters to the wrong moms. Uh, that's not a good joke. I'm not joking about it. I mean, I, I really thought that was the 134th. It was the 34th. Uh, and maybe that's the one out of Minnesota. I'm not sure. Um, so we've got two different groups here. These ships did not get damaged. The Hull and the President Polk. All right. Uh, does it make a difference if we put them on full speed? No. 32 and 17. It's going to go 17. Now I'm tempted to take the Hull out of here to try to save it. Uh, it's so much faster that I don't think... It may be able to escape. I don't think the Polk is going to escape, and I don't think any of this is going to escape. And so actually, eh, this has got 56th Coastal. Okay, let's have these all kind of split up. Um, so let's use a waypoint for the Polk, and let's put it down here so it's going straight south. All right, and then it'll branch over here. I've got it going to Tahiti. And again, that's why I build up a place like Tahiti. Um, okay, the hole is the one out of here. So let's form a new task force. It doesn't matter. We can make it ASW surface combat. Uh, let's take the hole, all right? And let's also have that move towards Tahiti. But we'll have that one go diagonally, all right? And that's pretty fast, right? It's going to get out here and get moving yeah, I may vector it just a little south. So let's use a waypoint one. Uh, we'll have it kind of go, a, you know, not through the islands, but go this way. It's a little faster, a little more direct. So that'll go out there. And then the Polk is going south. And then these guys will try to limp into Suva with the 111th Base Force and 34th Infantry. They fish a lot of these guys out of the water, uh, but those, they're dead men walking right? I mean, they really are. Now we've got two groups of American submarines over here. The salmon and the spearfish do the same thing, set boundary one. Uh, this one, in case he's moving up, maybe I'll put that one as a patrol zone there. Uh, I doubt he's going to be moving backwards. So let's take this. This has got four subs in it. This I like to hunt, you know, have them hunt like uh, wolf packs here uh, using German doctrine. Now, where would this go? He's probably going to go straight down here, but who knows how far. So let's put one there, one there. They've got a one max react. Uh, their patrol zone is this only this one hex. Uh, now, we could have them kind of float around here, uh, but it, eh, that's probably the better idea. Let's do a patrol boundary two uh, there. This, this way, you know, they're just getting a little movement boundary three there so he'll just kind of float in this area all right and then the other one i'll, I'll change that offline uh the cargo ship has got to boogie uh instead of going south like that let's have it go straight to brisbane uh so we're just having everything scatter this is what you have to do when the carriers come into play get everything the hell out of there um what do we have here we've got another cargo ship Ugh, shoot Let's have this one kind of go north, or I'm sorry, southwest. Whoops, didn't mean Port Kimball. Let's put it to Sydney. Uh, there we go. All right, so that's going to head to Sydney. Woo, we're on the scramble. Uh, what planes do we have here? As you can see, we've got some level bombers. The Hudsons, I mean, they're not really made for this. They're made for ground bombing. We've got some Vincents, which are really actually quite 
you know, used for recon. Uh, and then we've got the float patrol. All right, it's on naval search in this area. Well, there's nothing really to do there. As you can see, I unloaded a lot of artillery here at Suva. Suva is so important. It, that's why I was trying to get these guys up here. I thought his carriers had cleared, and that's what you got to look for down here. That's why you've got a lot of Catalinas up and running, trying to figure out where the heck his carriers are. Uh, I thought his carriers are, had cleared. Obviously, they had not. Um, and so I was trying to sneak these guys up here, and bam, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Lodric was all over it. Where's this guy going? Okay, he's going south. Where's this French frigate? Uh, going it's two AKLs. As a matter of fact, let's have them uh, actually go towards Tahiti and get this out of here if we can. Um, okay, I mean, you know, I tried to get more infantry up here. Suva is just it's, you know, in the top 10 most important places on the map, in my opinion. We've already got some Kiwi infantry here, a 48 and a 48, so that's 96. We've got some engineers here. We've got three full base forces, uh, and we've got three groups of artillery, but I was trying to get the 34th infantry in as well, and I had another base force. We really didn't need it there, and that poor base force is going to pay the price. That really probably should have gone to Nomaya. Um... Okay, I think it's going to do it for uh, just our talk this time. Let's spin around the map really quickly and just see if there's anything else I wanted to point out. Uh, the Japanese are massing at Rabal. You can see here, you know, they're going to be coming after Buna, Port Moresby, this area, Lay, uh, very soon. Um, up here to the north of Java, he's right one off of Singapore. You know, uh, he's he's going to attack there sooner rather than later. In the Philippines, we've pretty much lost everything. Bataan still stands, but you can see it's got no supply and no way to get supply. He's now taken Davao. Uh, he'll be moving up to Cagayan shortly, which is where we've got everybody massed at Cagayan to try to hold out for a little bit. In China, we're still on the move. We're trying to get these damn units up here. Uh, this place has become very important, Hangyang. Uh, I'm going to try to get this unit up to Hang Yang, or I'd say this stack of units up to Hang Yang. I'm going to try to get these units to Hang Yang uh, and, you know, kind of build this wall on the river the best we can. Uh, here, this unit is not yet trapped, or this stack of units, and you can see it's a lot. Uh, it's part of 3rd Group Army, or a lot of this is, and 31st Group Army. Uh, which eventually then goes into 5th War area. It's got an assault strength of 610. Fairly strong. I'm trying to get him out of here. And now you can see I've started to move out of Cheng Chao and Luoyang. Why am I doing that? Well, he's coming to Cyan. If he takes Cyan, we're surrounded, right? I've got to try to get these guys down the road on a major road, and I may take them over here, or we may counterattack into Cyan. But things are looking fairly desperate uh, up in this area of the map anyway. We look fine down here, even though these guys get bombed over and over and over. But we'll come look at China next time. Before I go, let's look at the stats. Uh, yesterday, or the last turn, I ran 5307 on the sorties. Uh, the Lodric ran 76, 76 uh, for the campaign. You can see he's run about 50,000 more sorties than we have. We had eight air-to-air -air losses. He had three. Uh, nobody was destroyed on the field. He had one destroyed by flak, and we went six and six on operational. So once again, he gets the better of us in the air. As you can see, the score is basically tied, and once he takes Singapore, that's 1,800 points. So uh, he will soon be ahead of us. We just can't let him get four times ahead of us uh, by 1943. That's the goal. Uh, political points, we I've spent quite a few of these, 178, okay? Uh, aircraft losses, eh, we'll look at this stuff closer next time. I'll do it at the start of the episode. Ship sunk uh, last turn. You can see the damage he did. Uh, two destroyers that were with the transports, okay? Uh, near Tongatapu, okay? The, this was the disaster at Suva. And then we had one lost at Naughty, which is also right by Suva. I just like to say Naughty. Uh, two destroyers, they weren't huge points. But then we lost the Jackson, Monroe, Fillmore, and Tyler. That adds up. 
Uh, and the Taylor. Oh, sorry, I forgot one. 70, 89 total points of transports were lost uh, at the devastation of Suva, and it's not over yet. Uh, so that really hurts. We also lost an AKL and an AK, the Coast Trader, was in with this task force. Uh, so overall, we lost about 110 points in that task force. Can't do that. Uh, that was a mistake on my end. I, I just really wanted to get some troops up there because I value Suva so highly. Um, all right. Like I said, next time when we come back here, We'll look at all of this stuff in more detail. What's coming in, ship availability. Uh, what do we have, ETA? Let's just check it really quickly. I like to see what's coming in. It's fun. Uh, yeah, we got some AKs, some KVs at Victoria, so out in Canada. Uh, some AKs at Cristobal. Hey, we get two battleships, the New Mexico and the Mississippi, in four days. That's fun. Uh, these guys have got the 14 inchers. Uh, and an 822 anti-aircraft, uh, not necessarily using as anti-aircraft that often, really you're using these big guns, whether it be bombardment or against other surface fleets. Uh, that puts us on a little better footing against the Japanese, the big 14-inchers. Uh, so that'll be coming in. Those are the New Mexico class, I believe, uh, that come in here January of 42. So we'll be getting those. Uh, we get some subs, quite a few subs in seven days. That's fun. We get a light cruiser, the Sumatra, at Surabaya. Now, that's going to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Surabaya is not long for this uh, world, potentially. Uh, we'll have to get that out of there. I, I don't know. We'll have to think about that. We also get the Idaho at San Francisco in 13 days. So three new American battleships ready to set sail. And that's, that's what you get as the Americans. You just keep getting stuff. Uh, all right, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I know I did. I love talking about this game. Uh, when we come back next time, we'll do the combat resolution based off of this save. Uh, again, if we look up here, there's not as much going on around Colombo now. We did spot some ships, I think, out around Diego Garcia, uh, but nothing I've seen. We've just got ships going up and down the coast of India here. Abaddon to Karachi, Aden to Karachi, troops, and sometimes supply fuel that's it to karachi over and over and over again out at cape town um you're just going to perth so you know just set them up at cape town and head them to perth uh every once in a while you may have something go to colombo but since he's got ships in the area i've kind of paused that for now anyway this has been strategy gaming dojo i'll talk to you next time have a good one